Andrew Tucker, and welcome to Andrew Tucker World. What's going on, all my great people? What's going on, all my boxing fans? Um, listen, this fight tonight between, uh, I can't really pronounce that first name, but, you know, we're going to say Dan, Mr. Dan, Mr. Dan Zarilla. Mr. Zarilla, you know, um, I don't know what it looked like to me, you know, if you if you want me to be honest. It was just he made it a sort of a boring fight by standing on the outside, picking his shots and things of that nature, making it more of a chess match on the outside, being a slickster in a way, you know, between him. And I got the highlight of the knockdowns that were traded, you know, uh, on Twitter. So go to Twitter and check out the highlights, Andrew Tucker World. Uh, it's the same thing for Instagram, Andrew Tucker, Andrew Tucker World. But anyways, um. You know, as far as this fight, he made it a a a, a more of a chess match, Mister uh, Mister Zorella. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, it was Regis Regis Progress. You know, he had he had a hard time trying to cut the ring off, and trying to like be aggressive, come forward, and try to apply pressure to walk him down. At times, he tried to explode. He tried to uh set him up, set uh Mister Zorella up with 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 uh some mean combinations. And tried to explode, explode on him and dominate when he felt he hurt him and knocked him down. I believe in that first, was it the second round? I think the second round or something like that. It could have either be the first. I think it was like the, probably the second round. And um, you know, you got to give it to you got to give it to Dan Zarilla. Uh, I think he was just smart, and I think that uh, uh, Regis also had to respect his power. He knew that the guy had power and he was a good counter puncher. You know, and then and then his stance was just also. Like if you if you're not prepared for for his style or his stance, uh, and, and then he had a fast jab. It was a perfectly timed jab, perfectly timed right hand. But it's just the, the it was just the timing of Zan Zorilla. Even though people may be saying, "Oh, well, the fight was born. The fight was born. He made it a born fight. He made it more of a chess match." And and you know, Regis is not really that type of fighter. That, that he was that type of fighter that look, look he's a more of a technical brawler. He's a boxer puncher, and he can box when he wants to box. Get on his toes. I felt he should have got on his toes a lot more. He should have came. He should have rushed in with double jabs, triple jabs, to set up the left hand, to follow up with a right hook, then to um, hooks to the head, hooks to the body, left hand, left hands to the body, follow with right hooks to the head, come back with a left hook. I mean, it just, it just, he could have mixed up his attack a whole lot better, been a little smarter. You know, keeping his head off the center line, getting hit. With them right hands, getting hit with them jabs, getting hit, getting hit with them left hooks and them right hooks, you know, you know, even uh body shots. But Regis did land a good body shot that got the attention of Mr. Danzarilla. You know what I'm saying? And then at the, at the same time, I just feel that he should have, you know, to really, to get to really get to a fighter with this particular style, you're gonna have to use your jab a lot more and not just just you know these pity pat jabs and just throwing it, you know, you know, throwing it. <laughs> I mean, you're not, you know, you can't just be stationary and you can't just plant your feet and throw your jabs. You got to be on your toes. You know what I'm saying? You got to be on your toes. You got to be on your toes when you're throwing the jabs. You got to work your way on the inside, double jab, triple jab, not just the single, single jabs, you know, to set up the left hand. You know what I mean? You got to learn how to mix up your attack, go push forward, you know, to so get on your toes when you're throwing these shots on the fly. Throwing these counters and throwing the combinations on the fly on your toes. Being stationary, this guy was on his toes. This guy was moving as Mr. As far as uh Dan Zorilla, he was on he was moving, working the angles, countering, and he was being explosive at times. But yeah, he made it somewhat of a boring fight. But he made it a highly competitive chess match. And I think Regis, you know, threw it threw him off a little bit. You know what I mean? And I just think that, you know, he would have to prepare, you know, be, you know, go and work on some things and kind of perfect some things. You know what I'm saying? In the gym, you know, when they're dealing with these type of styles, because what if you dealt what if you dealt with a Tio Fima Lopez at 140? I don't know what's going on with Tio. You know, I don't know if he's gonna retire or not. You know, I, I know I understand Tio's situation. I understand his I understand his stance on was as far as the business side of boxing. But, you know, if even if uh Regis Progress dealing with a Devin Haney or with a pure boxer like that, you know what I'm saying, dealing with that type of style. You know he can have he can have major problems and you know he has the power. So you know if he ain't you know if he ain't you know in this case this guy is a per a per boxer puncher. You know what I'm saying now when then when I say per boxer and a puncher because this guy has punching power. He's a big puncher. So this style was very uh, awkward and very difficult for him. You know and threw him off. He won. He, Regis won by split decision, but it was a very close fight and and it's and and um I'm going to go back and rewatch the fight but in my eyes it seemed like Regis 
probably lost this fight. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to even lie. I felt that he probably lost that fight, you know, um, maybe by maybe by two or three rounds. You know, I'm not going to even lie to you. I'm not going to even, you know, no bias towards. And I love Regis. He's one of my favorite favorite fighters. You know, um, I'm just tuning in to Dan Zarilla. I only seen like four of his fights. So, um, um, of course, you know, I was, you know, I favor Regis going into the fight. So it's no bias. It's no favoritism. It's none of that BS nonsense over here. But uh, Regis, Regis progress wins by uh, split decision. But I felt that uh, I felt and in, 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 it looked like to me, I didn't really clear. I didn't, you know, all the way go through with, you know, with the scoring, you know, you know, um, but I'm going to re rewatch the fight and I'm going to score the fight based off the uh, based off the point system, the scoring, the uh, you know, do professional scoring or based off the point system and basically see who really want to fight but in my eyes it looks like mr uh mr danzo really won from you know from how i was watching the fight you know what i mean uh uh but it was a you know somewhat of a competitive highly competitive fight um and it was split decision so it was very close but it seemed like mr uh Zanz won the fight in my eyes but regis if you guys had it for regis i respect that you know maybe he did win the fight but it was some things he could have did to. It was some things he 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 could have done to made it to made it a little slightly a little bit more easier, but it wasn't easy because you're dealing with an awkward, difficult style and and then a pure boxer puncher and a guy that liked to play play it play it from the outside and and uh, work very quick reflexes, very great timing and and also had decent hand speed. So you guys, let me know what's going on in the comment section. Love you guys and I'm out. Much love and respect.